Push That Rock with Simpson Matt. This lesson covers balls and urn problems again, this time using counting techniques. So let's consider an experiment where we have a population. It's an awfully small one. It has 12 members. The members are red and green and blue. We're going to pour out four of the members. That means we're going to sample without replacement. And we're going to count blues. How many in the population are blue? So let's think about that. Could we pour out four balls and get no blues? Sure, we could get this green, green, red, and red, and we'd get no blues. So no blues is possible. We could get one blue. We could get two blues. We could get three blues. But even though we're going to pour out four balls, we can't get four blues because there's not four in there. So this is the sample space. Now, it's by no means symmetric. So we can't just say, oh, it's a one in four chance to get zero balls because the sample space is not symmetric. So we're going to think about how many different possible outcomes there are so we would know the size of an actual symmetric sample space if we were to build one. How many possible outcomes are there if we have 12 balls in the urn and we're pouring out four? Well, we're selecting four from 12. So let's say 12 choose four problem. So 12 choose four off Pascal's triangle is 495. Or you can use the formulas that we developed in class. So 12 choose four is 495. So there's 495 ways to pour or select four balls from the 12. Now, I don't want to build a symmetric sample space, and neither do you, that it's got 495 uh, spaces in it. So we'll think about this differently. Let's consider the case of drawing two blues. Two blues. So that's one of the things that could happen. Remember, our sample space was 0, 1, 2, or 3. So let's do two. Well, we would have to get three blues. Out of the three blues, we'd have to choose two of them to get two blues. So out of the three blues, we'd have to choose two. And out of the nine other colored balls, the green and red balls, out of the nine other balls, we'd have to choose two because we're choosing a total of four. And nine and three is the total number 12 that's in the population. Two and two is the total in our sample, four. So we'd have to choose two from three and then two from nine. So that means the number of ways that we could get two blues is three choose two times, because of the end, nine choose two, three times 36 is 108 ways to choose two blues. How about that? So what is the probability of choosing two blues? Well, we said there's 495 things that could possibly happen and there's 108 ways to get two blues. So the probability is 108 out of 495. And obviously this divides by nine. Oh, so does this. So we can factor out the common nine and reduce. We'll stick with this so it makes it easy when we're adding our probabilities later. But if this was asking the question, what is the probability of choosing two blues? Of course, I would prefer this answer, but I'll accept that. Let's move on. So now what we want to do is look at the probability distribution for our experiment of pouring out four from this urn that has 12 balls, three of them blue, and we're going to pour out four and count the number of blues. What's the probability distribution? Well, probability distribution lists, it lists all the things that could happen of what you're counting for whatever the outcome is. Well, we're counting blues, so we could have zero as our count, we could have one as our count, two as our count, or three as our count. Okay. And then you list the probabilities of those things. So we need to get the probabilities. We already did this one. We did this. It's 108 out of 495. So let's do the others similarly. How would we get zero? Well, to get zero blues, from the three blues, we'd have to choose none. And from the nine non-blues, we'd have to choose four. So this is one. 9 choose 4 is 126. 1 times 126 is 126. And we already know that the total number of outcomes is choo uh, 12 choose 4. 4 from 12, which was 495. So that's the probability of zero blues.
How many ways are there to get uh, one blue? Well, we'd have to get one of the three blues that are in there. But if we're getting one blue and we're choosing four, well, then that means that we would need to get three other balls that were not blue. So we're going to have to get three other balls that are not blue. So from the nine, we're going to choose three. So that means we need to go this outcome, three choose one, and nine choose three. So we're going to multiply. Now, three choose one is obviously three on Pascal's triangle. And nine choose three is going to be, if you look on the triangle, 84. Three times 84 is 252. So, and then remember the total number of outcomes is 40, 495, 12 choose four. Now, the last one we need to do is three. We could just add all these up and then subtract from a, a one. But I want to be able to check my probability distribution. So I'm already, I'm going to go ahead and compute it by, by force. So to get three blues, I'd have to choose all three of the blues from the three blues. And then I'd have to choose one other colored ball to make the total of four balls that, because we're pouring out four. One other colored ball from the nine non-blues. And then you multiply that out. Well, three, three is one, and nine choose one is obviously nine. So we get nine in the numerator, and this is 495 as always. Now to check our work, we add this, 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 and this, and it should be 495 over 495 because the probability total must be one. And of course it is. Math made Simpson simple at Simpson Math.